Good day. We're glad to be with you again. And this time we're here to minister to the pastors to help them, to encourage them with some words of encouragement. I want to read to us today from Mark chapter 4 and verse 35, where the Bible says, In the same day, when the even was now come, he saith unto them, Let us pass over to the other side. The disciples and Jesus got in the boat and headed across the sea. As they went, a storm came, and the storm was so tempestuous, so strong, that they worried they were going to sink, and they woke the master who was asleep, resting. He rose, rebuked the storm, and gave peace. But I want us to observe something in this story. First off, and that is that the disciples were in the will of God in the storm. So many times the devil will try to tell us when we have problems or difficulties that, well, if you'd have done this, if, uh, if you'd have done that, you wouldn't have these problems now. But the disciples were in the will of God in the storm. Now there are storms sometimes that we cause ourselves. Jonah was in the storm. But the reason he was in the storm was because Jonah was running from God and he was out of the will of God. And um, that's... But this is not the storm we're in, the trial we're in now is not something that we caused, not something that we brought into effect. But we also note that there are unexpected storms. Actually, this storm that the disciples were in was an unexpected storm. Jesus didn't ask them, you know, to shove off land and go out into the uh, lake with a typhoon or a hurricane. No. It appeared to be probably a very normal day, normal time. And he told the disciples to go. And they left what they thought was going to be on a quick trip to go across. And the winds arose. Now, sometimes there are storms that come to us with warning. Um, God warns us and God tells us. And, you know, Noah, for 120 years, uh, God had told him that it was going uh, to prepare, to get ready. But, and he did, but the reality is that the disciples are just in the boat going in across and then without any indication of what's happening to them, they're in a storm. And for us today, I don't think anybody, if we were talking a year ago, that anybody anticipated that we wouldn't be in this type of situation, this type of problem. And we may even have times when we question why. Uh, we're in the flesh. And so there are times that we may wonder, uh, did we do something? Is there a reason why? But people have to understand, and this is Jesus told his disciples, let's go to the other side. They were going to the other side. He was going to take them there. We don't know what tomorrow holds. One of the things in the midst of this storm that the disciples were in and uh, something we should recognize, the disciples had seen many things. They'd seen him turn the water and the wine. They'd seen the man by the pool of Bethesda healed. They'd seen the widow of Nain's son raised. They'd seen him cast out demons. They'd seen a leopard healed. They'd seen a centurion servant healed. They'd seen Peter's mother-in-law healed. Multitudes followed him for his healing. And yet now they're in the midst of a trial where they need help and they're fearful. I want you to know that we need to have confidence in Christ and in his help. Oh, we, we sometimes in problems and trials go around discouraged, feeling depressed, but we shouldn't be. I can't explain this, but my hand is in his hand. I'm in his plan. I'm in his will. And my hand's in his hand, and those are the two things that are important. I know that no matter what, my hand's in his. You can go through the Bible. You can find stories even like of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Their hand was in his. They had confidence. And so today, friend, I, I want you to be encouraged to know that if you're in God's plan and in God's will, God's got his hand on your life 
and you know that God is working things for whatever purpose he has. Second thing I want to mention in this, and not really dealing so much with the story of the storm there, but I want to talk to you about using our available resources. Because what do you do in the storm? What do you do in trials? One problem that we have in times like this, sometimes people um, just sit back and do nothing. Well, you know, I can't go to my church and preach to my people like I normally do, so I really don't have anything else to do. What can I do? I want you to understand something. As your missionary, this is a time that's very hard for me. Um, I'll be honest, I've never been home as much as I have been in the last couple months. Um, but I have to be positive about it. I have to look at it and say, well, God is providing me time. Now, he's not giving me time just so I can go lay down in the bed and pout and feel sorry for myself and say, well, I guess God gave me time to catch up on my sleep. No, God gave me time to prepare myself. You know, uh, most of the time, you remember the one time Jesus came and he called his disciples. Do you remember what they were doing? They were drying their nets. What were they doing? They weren't working. They were getting their nets ready for the next time that they went out. You know, and that's in our experience as a preacher, as a believer. No, maybe I can't do what I always do, but I should spend some time actually preparing myself. You have time, use it wisely. I, I, I've spent more time reading my Bible. I've spent more time praying, praying for my ministry, praying for you, praying for our situation. I, I've had that time. I've had more time to study and prepare. I've been spending time in prayer. I, of course, I listen some to different preachers just to encourage myself and make sure. But, you know, I'm spending time reading, studying, getting myself prepared. My wife and I, we spend some time with each other. Uh, now, if you've got family, don't kill each other. It makes sometimes this time is difficult when you seem like you're cooped up together all the time. Don't, but use the time. You know, sometimes even, you know, preachers, well, you know, son, I'd, I'd, I'd spend some time with you, but well, I got to go preach this service and I got to go do that and I got to go do this. Well, you can't do it now. So spend time with your family. Make good time. Make good memories. Now, oh, is it a hard, weird time? Yes. But you can, you know what, you can even have good memories of this time. Now, another thing that you need to do when we talk about this, about using your available resources, using your available time, is look for opportunities. Look for ways that you can do things differently. You know, and that's not the same, same old, same old, obviously, because you're not in the same position, the same places with the same things. But you know, one of the things I think about was the Apostle Paul. You remember that for about two years of his life, after a lengthy ocean voyage to Rome, about two years of his life, he spent in a house as a prisoner uh, with a guard there. He could receive visitors, but he couldn't go out and do his normal preaching. He couldn't go, go out and be like he normally was. But what did he do? He received the visitors. He talked to them. He shared with them. During that time, if I understand properly, he wrote five of his epistles that he wrote. He was busy in jail, so to speak. He was in prison, but he was busy. He wasn't just sitting there twiddling, just sitting there, well, I don't know what I'm going to do. I just, I don't have anything to do. And actually, what's really interesting is probably one of Paul's most rejoicing epistles is the book of Philippians that he wrote in the jail. He wrote, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Oh, Paul, how could you do that? You're locked up. And no, because he took the opportunities that God gave him, the things that God passed his way. Paul said, well, I'm going to do this. You know, I, I got to thinking today that poor jailers that were had to be with him. How much of the gospel do you think they got? as he sat there and talked to them, as he talked to other people and gave them the words of God. I can't imagine those, some of those men probably got saved and some of them probably couldn't wait to get off their shift, wait to get away and break free from him for a little bit of peace because 
Paul was preaching, Paul was witnessing, Paul was talking. Several weeks ago, Pastor Allen talked to me and my wife about uh, possibly doing some videos for his church. Now, this is not our normal means of ministry, but you know what we took in, we said, okay, well, we'll try it. Now, being very honest with you, I'm feeling much more comfortable doing this now than I did, and actually now I'm enjoying it. And God is giving us a means to minister to people that probably would not hear from us if they hadn't had the internet. Um, our messages, from what I understand, are being posted in a lot of different places, and, and many people are listening and many people are hearing them. And so God's giving us opportunity to minister, but you have to think out what they call outside of the box. You have to think outside of your little way that you always do things and say, well, what can I do? How can I minister? What can I do for the Lord? I mean, if nothing else, you can write Bible studies. You know, some of our pastors I know, uh, they're going around and doing house-to-house -house ministry. If it works, if you can do it where you're at, do it. I was speaking with Brother Matthew Vance just today on the phone, and most of our pastors know him very well since he's been here many times and ministered and done so well, and they love him, and He's, he was sharing with me, he, of course, he has a ministry in assisted living home, and he ministers there. On, and last weekend, he had a service there. Uh, he preached outside the building, and um, they brought residents to the area where they could hear him, and they opened the windows so that he could minister to them. And, and some, of the, some of the people, the residents there even came outside and listened to him. But he had me laughing because he said, you know, he said there were some of those that actually said that they didn't want to come to service, that they didn't have time to come to service, that this Sunday they came outside and listened to him. You know why? Because they didn't have anything else to do. They had time on their hands. And so they used it. Uh, they probably hadn't had a lot of visitors. And so even though realistically they couldn't shake his hand and talk to him about personal matters, they could at least have a visitor and listen to him. And so what you need to do is look for ways to minister. Look for things that you can do. Write a Bible study. If, if nothing else, if nothing else, prepare yourself so that when the time comes for you to go back in the regular ministry, you say, well, I don't know if this will ever pass. It's going to pass. Someday it'll pass. I don't can't tell you the day. I can't tell you when things will go back to the uh, way that we can have church and church and, and do like we do. But prepare yourself. Get yourself ready. Um, do anything you can do to help fulfill the great commission that has been given to you by the Lord Jesus Christ. Look for opportunities. Look for open doors and, and ways that you can minister. There's probably people that you can talk to now if you're out and about that may never have listened to, but they've got time and they're willing to listen and look. So at this time, use those opportunities. If nothing else, be a channel. Share with people the ways, like for instance, I've been doing, sharing different places. And if you don't know other places that you can hear good preaching, you text me and ask me and I'll send you places and preachers' names that you can look up. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes, he said, Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. For there is no work, or, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave, whither thou goest. We're all going to go to the grave someday, so use the time and the things that God's given you. Find something that you can do for God and do it the best you can. Because when you leave, your time of labor is over. Jesus recognized this when he said, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. Jesus, Jesus recognized, I've got to work. Friend, I want to tell you something. Pastor friend, you have a work. There's something that you can do for God now. Just open your eyes and let God lead and guide you. This isn't out of the will of God. God's got us here for a purpose. I can't tell you all the purpose, but I can tell you what to do in that purpose. And you need to develop your life for God. Let's bow our heads to pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word and the truth of your word. 
And Lord, you know right now that some of our pastors, Lord, they're discouraged, Lord, because God, it's difficult. Lord, it's they're used to ministering, they're used to doing and going, and Lord, they can't right now. But Lord, I pray that you'd cause their eyes to be open to opportunities that they have. And Lord, cause them to be encouraged, Lord, that at some point this is going to pass. And Lord, to rejoice in you. Lord, to listen to your word, to read your word, to study. Lord, to pray. God, use this time, God, to be able to revitalize themselves, to strengthen themselves, Lord, so that they can do their best for you. Lord, bless and minister and help. Be with their wives and their families, Lord. Give each of them strength. Lord, we thank you for your blessings in our life. Lord, for your goodness and your mercy. Minister now to each one in Jesus' name. Amen. Friend, we're thankful that you came and listened to us today. And we just ask that you just let God work in your life. May the Lord bless you until we talk to you again. Thank you for your time.